Good morning. Welcome to everybody. God has gathered up to worship here this day. We give thanks for this beautiful day and the opportunity to share it in worship with all of you. This is the day that we give thanks for the opportunity to also welcome people by live stream and on the radio broadcast and a day to consider how we move beyond worrying and carrying all of our worries on our shoulders so much that they weigh us down and how we hand those worries over to God and let God help us with our burdens. So we give thanks for the opportunity to consider that together today. We're glad to welcome Kelsey Sineder as our new worship host today, and Mike Mangan as our song leader and director of music. Thank you, Mike. Thank you to Kit up in the balcony. She's provided beautiful music already, as she will throughout the morning. And to our tech team, also found in the balcony, working on sound right now. Um, and to Cindy Recheck, our worship manager, and all of our ushers out in the entryway, we give thanks. And now let us breathe in God's spirit and begin to center ourselves in worship and turn to Mike to lead us in our opening hymn. Let's stand and join together in number 102 from the United Methodist Hymnal. Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bond your God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to And keep us still in grace And guide us when perplexed And free us from all ills In this world and the next All praise and thanks to God The Father Song and him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, who earth and heaven adore. For thus it was his now and shall be. Join me in today's call to worship. Bring your lives, bring your gifts. We all are welcome here. Bring your hopes, bring your dreams. Our dreams and dreams are inspired by God. Bring your prayers, bring your praise. We gather to worship in love. Now please join me in the opening prayer. As we gather, nourish us with your presence, bread of life. As we worship, Fill us with your springs of faith, living water. As we learn, inspire us with holy wisdom, eternal spirit. Help us recognize our gifts and discern how best to share them for the healing of your word. Amen. to find 
The power and comfort of God's hand in mine. Season by season, I watch him amazed in awe of the mystery of his perfect ways. All I have need of, his hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. trial or pain he did not recycle to bring me gain I can't remember a single regret in serving God only and trusting his hand His hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning. They fail not as thou hast been, the forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. This is my anthem. This is my song, the theme of the stories I've heard for so long. God has been faithful, he will be again. His loving compassion, it knows no end. All I have need of, his hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. He's always been faithful. He's always been faithful. Thank you so much. We're blessed by your message to us in music this morning. We together lift the words of prayer he taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from John 9, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went across the Galilee Sea, that is the Tiberias Sea. A large crowd followed him because they had seen the miraculous signs he had done among the sick. Jesus went up a mountain and sat there with his disciples. It was nearly time for Passover, the Jewish festival. He looked up and saw the large crowd coming toward him. He asked Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Jesus said this to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, more than half your salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, a youth here has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that for a crowd like this? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread, when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the people who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, each getting as much as they wanted. When they had plenty to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather up the leftover pieces, so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that had been left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw that he had done a miraculous sign, they said, This is truly the prophet who is coming into the world. Jesus understood that they were about to come and force him to be their king, so he took refuge again alone on a mountain. When evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake. They got into a boat and were crossing Lake Capernaum. It was already getting dark, and Jesus hadn't come for them yet. The water was getting rough because a strong wind was blowing. When the wind had driven them, driven them out for about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He was approaching the boat, and they were afraid. He said to them, I am, don't be afraid. Then they wanted to take him onto the boat, and just then the boat reached the land where they were heading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Kelsey. Well, for anyone just tuning in in the last few moments by live stream, this is our week of vacation Bible school, so we look like we are in a completely different place up front today. We rejoice in all the hard work of the team who helped create the sanctuary, and for everybody who is preparing to help host this community event, because this is an opportunity we have to help people of all ages know God's love through Jesus Christ and know about his teachings. It's a gift, and shouldn't we all be hoping that tonight as we gather up Vacation Bible School, there are a few people here who've never come to Vacation Bible School before, that that would be a new experience for. How many of us attended Vacation Bible School somewhere while we were growing up? A wide majority, not everybody, but many, many, many of us. So it's a familiar program to most of us. But it isn't for everybody. And it helps us always be prepared in how we welcome newcomers to faith. If we can back up and remember how it felt to come to something like that for the very first time. And remember that we had some worries and we weren't quite sure there'd be anybody friendly there to greet us. Because we all have to grow into how we will trust in unfamiliar situations with people we don't know, with something we haven't done before. Most of us worry a lot about things when we start something new. We worry about all kinds of details of them, most of us. And we tread with uncertainty because we don't know what's important when we're trying out something new and we're scared of things we haven't done before or we're just learning how to do them. I don't think Kelsey was scared at all, though. She's a confident person who's called to this. Good job. But I once had a seminary student that I worked with on Sunday mornings who obsessively asked me about the ties he wore and how to tie them. 
and I wasn't someone who was very good at helping with that. Eventually, I figured out that it was easier for him to talk to me about that than things that really mattered, because he was really nervous about learning to preach on Sunday mornings. It was outside of his comfort zone. So it was easier for him to talk about neckties. But what we really, really needed to get to instead in conversation was to talk about not telling jokes for his whole sermon and trusting God to help him develop Sunday morning's message. But before he could hear constructive criticism from me about the big picture, he needed to learn to trust me, that that was a safe place to be and a safe relationship to think about serious things that needed to be addressed. He needed to learn to trust that I wanted a good outcome for his ministry with the congregation and thought he had great potential. Sometimes the biggest gift we can give someone is to point them toward their potential by treating them like who they're becoming instead of who they are right now in the present. When, when, we, when we are encouraging potential and what's possible, that helps all of us get past the worry of the present when we can look toward what's possible and what God might be doing in the future. And this passage that Kelsey read for us is, is all about that because it gives us multiple examples of Jesus' disciples getting lost in the weeds of worry and losing track of the big picture of what they're trying to do together. Jesus was trying to say, look at what can happen when you trust me and we work together in ministry. But they looked at that multitude of people and it was getting to be about supper time and were overwhelmed with worry. Jesus saw only the opportunity to give his disciples a living example of how to trust God for everything to do with their ministry. And instead the disciples were worried about how many people were there and how they would find food and should they send the people away and what was happening with that. When what they really needed to do was just trust God's presence in Jesus to help ministry happen to everybody God had gathered up there. And after that miracle, Jesus sent his disciples traveling ahead of him, and they encountered a storm. They were filled with worry and fear again, this time for their very lives. But it was a time of trusting God with their lives. Before it was their ministry, now it's literally their lives. So Jesus comes to them walking across the water and he has calmed those seas. We can see the sea is suddenly at peace. What an amazing miracle. It's so impressive that the disciples try to take Jesus into the boat with them. Surely he laughs at them over that because that's what he does always with our lives, calms the troubled water, the troubled seas that we're trying to swim in, he makes them calm and brings us strength to deal with whatever is happening in our lives that troubles the seas of our lives. We best note that these are both situations that Jesus got his disciples into. He was leading them into ministry and keeping in mind that soon they would be on their own in ministry. He would not always be there at their side to guide them. And they didn't understand that yet. They wanted to make him their king. They wanted him to give orders and direct them. They wanted him to steer the boat. They wanted him to be with them always. They knew who they wanted him to be, but instead Jesus knew who they needed to be in the future. And there's a difference between those two things, between what they wanted and what Jesus knew they needed. Both situations invited the disciples to trust Jesus and step outside of their comfort zones. And they were filled with worry and fear and uncertainty because they're great examples of us. They represent us well. We worry 
we question, we doubt. Now, I, I don't personally believe worry is a sin like some of those verses in Proverbs tell us it is. I believe it's simply part of our human condition that we always have to be working on handing over to God. Because the only way to move past worry is to practice trusting God to be with us and trusting Jesus to guide us in whatever we face. We need to know we're not on our own. Trust only comes, though, when we understand someone has our best interests in mind. When, we're tr when we understand truly that they're not trying to hurt us, but help us. And that's true of all relationships of trust, whether they're between a seminary student and a supervising pastor, or Jesus and his disciples, or us and our God. We best start developing our trust in God because that leads us to trust the gifts God has placed within each of us. And when that grows, we begin to trust other people and the gifts God has placed within them. And God is in all our relationships of trust. Because when we focus on trusting God in all times, we can begin to leave behind worrying about everything. And instead, we can let worry that sparks up in us be kind of a flag to point to what we need to pray on and what we need to work on rather than letting it literally paralyze us and have, it, have us in its power. We can start by trusting God to, gu God to guide our lives. And when we do that, the next step is trusting God to guide our ministry together. I absolutely believe that God has placed all the gifts we need to do the ministry God calls us to do right here in the people of this congregation and everybody that God gathers up here in this place. But it will take all of us using the gifts God has given us to move our ministry forward. And we're going to need everybody involved in ministry to take the next steps God calls us to take together. Each and every one of us can ask God's guidance and strength for ourselves personally and for the ministry we share. And each and every one of us can take time to invite God into our very beings to help us shoulder the burden of worry we carry by praying, whether we're worried about our lives or what next steps we take together. Right now, the next steps in ministry to hold in prayer are getting us all comfortable with inviting people to church and developing our abilities to talk about what's happening at church, even as we're preparing our building to welcome people as new fall programming begins. We'll be providing practice for inviting people in the months ahead because we'll be kicking off all kinds of fellowship and study opportunities so we can grow together in faith, even more than we're walking the journey together now this fall when new things start. So I ask you now to hold this ministry in prayer, both the ministry events coming and our ability to share those with others in our community. And in our prayers, ask God to help guide those events and strengthen everybody involved because that's an act of trusting God, fully growing into trusting God with those two steps. There are two steps to take, friends, to grow our trust in God. First, we need to trust the gifts God has placed within each of us. To look for those, discern those, get those named, let's have some conversations about that together because all of us grow closer to becoming the people God created us to be when we use the gifts God has placed within us for ministry. And then let us grow to trust each other. That means we'll prepare ourselves to support each other in ministry through our prayers and our prayerful actions. We need to be ready to engage in face-to-face -face con conversations, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. And let's ask the questions we need to, until we find the answers together.
Let's speak the truth with love and listen with our hearts to how we respond to one another in those conversations because God will be with us in those conversations and in our striving to do God's work together. Amazing things can happen when we trust God, things that can make us just literally shout out, and that's a good thing. That's absolutely what's happening here. We give thanks for the voices of little ones in our midst and the way God speaks to us God speaks to us in the silence of our hearts when we get worried. God speaks to us, speaks to, us to say, let go of those things we're hanging on to by ourselves. May we loosen our grip and hand those things over to God. Because God is ready to take the burdens that worry our hearts and weigh down our shoulders and help us carry them. We just have to invite God into our hearts with our prayers and really be ready to let go of those things that worry us. God is ready to do that every day of our lives with open arms, with strength, more strength than any of us could ever have. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our song, number 512, Stand By Me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me, like a ship upon the sea, the rulest wind and water stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the host of hell assail and my strength begins to fail, Thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, and my friends misunderstand, Thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand by me. When my foes in war array undertake to stop my way, Thou who saved Paul and Silas, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden, and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, Oh, thou lily of the valley, stand by me. Please be seated. As we come now to the time in our service, we have opportunity to acknowledge God has given us all we have. And God is ready to take all we have, even if that's the burden of worry on our hearts. May our ushers please come forward to receive the gifts and offerings we'll share with the church to do God's work.
Let's join together in our closing song, number 2142, from the faith we sing, Blessed Quietness. Joys are flowing like a river Since the Comforter has come Christ abides with us forever Makes the trusting heart a home Blessed quietness, holy quietness what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. Bringing life and health and gladness all around this heavenly guest, banished on me and sadness changed our weariness to rest blessed quietness holy quietness when assurance in my soul on the stormy sea Jesus speaks to me and the billows cease to roll like the rain that falls from heaven, like the sunlight from the sky, so the Spirit too is given, coming on us from on high. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roam. See a fruitful field is growing, blessed fruit of righteousness, and the streams of life are flowing in the lonely wilderness. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. What a wonderful salvation when we always see Christ's face. What a perfect habitation. What a quiet resting place. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, Jesus speaks to me, and the billows cease to roll. Amen. And now we have one is you, some of you can sit right back down if you're going to stay for the informational meeting or you can run out and get coffee. Please also know there is a Blue Zone meeting at 11 a.m. following our congregational information meeting. And now friends, as we go from this place, may we know Christ is ready to inhabit our very hearts. Let that be a comfort to us because God is ready to walk with us with whatever we face, receiving the worry that we carry in our hearts and worry that weighs us down. May we, we be ready to hand that over to God because God's hands are the best place for anything or anyone to be. Amen.
Thank you.